day from Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. It's week two of the NFL on EA Sports. Buccaneers taking on the Carolina Panthers. We are just a few miles from the Gulf Coast of Florida at Raymond James Stadium here in Tampa. With the echoes of cannon blast still ringing in our ears from the north end zone, the Bucks were introduced a moment ago, and they are all set as their guys will do battle with the Carolina Panthers. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. And they will elect to not bring this one out as our first drive will begin at the 25. Always fun to get a peek at Tom Brady as he gets in place to command this offense for Tampa Bay. If you just break it down in individual terms, he played really well last week. Zero interceptions, three touchdown passes. Not a whole lot more he could have done to win that game. But you know something's funny when we talked to him. All he focused on were throws he missed, yeah. other opportunities that didn't get done. Good sign of a leader. Great sign of a leader because they didn't win, and that's all he cares about. Second down, here's Fournette. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. And he got half of what he needed there, two yards. And it'll bring up a third and two more. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee. And that means fourth down. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. Christian McCaffrey deep for Carolina. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. So here are the Panthers under head coach Matt Rule. At a glance at the man under center at 6'5", he always demands attention. What I enjoyed this week is that you asked to talk to his offensive center before the game and find out a little bit more about him and what the relationship is. And that was a pretty positive story, wasn't it? Yeah, and really what I took away from that is just how it has permeated throughout the entire offensive line, the relationship they've had. It's really a group that's in sync. They care about him. That's the thing. They really care. And when you care that much, you're going to play that much harder for him and give him a better chance to lead the team that wins. It's second and eight at the 21-yard line. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Now he dumps this off over the middle, and he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. It's a first down on a gain of 10. It's a gain of 10. First down, Carolina. Here's McCaffrey. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Levante David in on the tackle. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. From the shotgun to McCaffrey. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. It's a four-yard pick up there, and it leaves him with third and five. Devin White on the tackle. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. Got his target, Samuel. 
And he is going to have a Panthers first down. They needed five there on third down. He winds up getting seven. First catch for the NFL's catch leader after one week, and it's a first down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. A pair of first downs gives him a first and 10 up at the 44. Now a run with McCaffrey. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. Now whistles here, and it looks like we've got a Panther that's having some difficulty down there getting up. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. Second and 11. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Got his man, Robbie Anderson. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 43. A gain of 13 yards as the quick slant keeps the drive moving. Pretty solid start for the rookie here on this first drive, Charles. Able to have some confidence, step it back into the pocket, move around a little bit, find open receivers, and deliver. That just means his confidence is going to continue to grow because he's getting more and more comfortable with each completed pass. Now a dump off here complete, and he'll get it down on the play to the 37. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your run back and it could turn into a big game downfield but what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game again he'll drop to throw and he connects with Ertz and he is going to have the Panthers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion 14 yards good for a Panther first down Nice job keeping that opening drive alive, and they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down, they did. Big time pickup for them, and now I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone, because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. Makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. And some room to maneuver. And he will score. Touchdown, Panthers. Curtis Samuel, his first touchdown of the new season. And the Panthers are going to take a first quarter lead. His first career touchdown pass, and, you know, it's cliche to say, but he's probably been envisioning this since he was a little kid. That's a cool moment. It really is. So enjoy the moment. Enjoy the time. Celebrate. Save the full reflection for later. But make sure you grab someone on the sidelines and say, hey, make sure I get that football, okay? Extra point right down the middle. And that makes the score 7-0. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And this carries into the end zone. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. First and two at the 37. Now Leonard Fournette. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half, to about the 39. Now whistles here, and it looks like we've got a Panther that's having some difficulty down there getting up. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. From the 39, Brady. 
He gets it into the hands of Gronkowski, complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. That's a gain of six. The Brady Gronk connection, certainly something to watch here with the Bucs in 2020. Of Tom Brady's 541 touchdown passes coming into 2020, Gronk's 78 were the most of any receiver. And he is going to have a box first down as this defense unable to hold. It's a seven-yard gain there on third and two. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. So from Panther territory now, it's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. From the gun, it's Brady. That's caught by the big tight end, O.J. Howard. Uh, he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Uh, this, of course, the home opener for the Buccaneers. A date folks in Tampa have had circled since, I don't know, about 6.30 Eastern time on March 17th. That's the day that TB12 officially became a Buccaneer CD. And think about it this way, Brandon. Back in the old days, we used to talk about what was it, what we call water cooler talk, right? You take a break at work and you talk about the team and everybody's standing around. Now, whatever passes is water cooler talk, the social media, the texting, all of those things. Since that moment that it was announced it was official, that Tom Brady was a Buccaneer, that's all these people have cared about. Seeing this game in Tampa, and let's face it, this team hasn't been to the playoffs in a decade or so. Now they're talking about going to the Super Bowl. Forget just getting to the playoffs. That's what Tom Brady has brought to this franchise. Officially, it's no gain on the play, and they'll remain a few inches shy of a first with third down looming. Less than a yard. So third and inches, and this will be the ninth play of the drive. A shotgun give to Fournette. And Fournette trying to power his way forward, but I don't think he got there. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. As a linebacker, you're taught to stay just slightly behind the ball carrier just in case he makes a cutback. But when you find the gap, shoot it. And he found it all right. Took it straight into the backfield and made the tackle for a loss. The field goal unit's going to stay put on the sideline. They're going to go on fourth down here. Here's Vaughn. They'll run for it. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he will reach the five-yard line before going out of bounds. It's first and goal after they rip off a solid chunk of yardage in the ground game on a risky fourth down call. The first drive this unit had, they punted. This drive much more polished, just looking crisper, aren't they, moving the ball? Maybe the first drive was a little bit of a wake-up call. Probably a little bit angry that they had to punt the ball away the first time they had it. Got motivated, got to the sideline, said, OK, let's not let that happen here as we take over again. It looks like a jumbo set with three tight ends here for first and goal. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. So that'll back him up five. And the situation changes a bit now. First and goal from back at the 10. Now they'll throw with Brady. That's out to his running back, Fournette. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Three yards the gain there, second down. And that's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Buccaneers are an extra point away from tying up this football game. CD, it seemed like they were so focused on the guys out wide, they forgot about him out of the backfield. That's a really good point because you've got to communicate, and often 
oftentimes when you start counting receivers, that's exactly what you do. You start from the widest receiver, work your way inside. Who gets lost sometimes? The back in the backfield. That's exactly what happened there. And he got into the end zone. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. So that drive spans 13 plays, and it ends with a touchdown for the Bucks. So I'll leave it at 7 now as they kick it away. This will be fielded inside the 5. And able to get this out to the 25. The Panthers take over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Out comes Christian McCaffrey with the rest of the offense. A tough challenge here in this one. We'll see if he can duplicate the numbers on your screen that he put up last week, up over 100 and a touchdown. We were watching tape to prepare for this game. One thing you noted that I totally agree with, great complimentary piece in the last game. You know, they're able to throw it pretty well. He ran it exceptionally, and he hoped to continue that same formula in this game. Complimentary with an E, not an I. That's my English teacher right there. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, and it's second down. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time, because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. A gain of seven yards. And it's third down. Out of the gun now on third down. To the right side, and he's got more complete. The pass. Not at all what they envisioned on third down, three yards in the wrong direction. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. Michael on fourth down, the Panthers send out Michael Pilardi to kick it away. Back deep, Antonio Brown. They only punted twice in the win last week as he gets this one away. A pretty good punt there, but also a nice return of 12 yards. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. A good balance attack for that last touchdown drive they had. Now it's time to see if they can do that again. It really becomes a tale of two play callers, doesn't it? The offensive guy, he's in sync. Everything is working pretty well for the defense. Yeah, what's going on on the defensive That's side? That's a line. tough one because he's prepped all week as well, and he can't get a bead on exactly what they're doing right now. What he needs is one of his guys just to make a big play and disrupt things. Brings up second and seven. On second and seven, Brady. He'll set up the screen to Fournette. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. A gain of 13. It's a first down. First and 10 at the 50-yard line. From midfield, here's Brady. And that's complete. It's Chris Godwin. Brady's pass. Complete to Chris Godwin. 7-7, seven, seven, our score after one. With the score tied, 7-7. Seven to seven. They'll run with Fournette. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. The Bucks on third down, just one for three thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. On the run, it's Fournette. Oh, well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. Just a simple run play there on third and one, but this D was up to the challenge and stopped him, bringing it up fourth down. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he'll punt it away for the second time.
That'll be out of bounds, and how good was that? They'll say the three-yard line. That's where they spot it. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. A reminder, still some good games coming up here in week two of the NFL. Later tonight, a rematch from that Super Bowl a few years back. New England visits Seattle up in the Northwest. And then on Monday night, we'll be there. The first regular season NFL game ever played in the state of Nevada. The New Orleans Saints and the Las Vegas Raiders from Allegiant Stadium. That should be something. A gain of three, second down. A three-yard pickup brings up second and seven. Caught by the tight end, Ertz. And they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. It's a first down on a gain of 10. It's a I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. They'll get him to the ground at the 20 following a pickup of four. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. A gain of four. It's now second and McCaffrey fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. The Panthers on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and five. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean also just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, like hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies unable to get it done. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Their own 40-yard line. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Fournette running out of the gun. And he works his way forward for about four up to the midfield strike. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Third and inches, and they've got some extra beef up front. Three tight ends. Fournette on the counter, and he's going to run into a brick wall right in the middle of the field, and I don't think he got there. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. No gain on the play. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. And they'll be looking to avoid what happened last time with just punting the football. But when you look at how teams play the game, that complimentary football, 
comes into play. How do I take care of my defense? How do I take care of my offense? Well, the defense is taking care of them in a lot of ways. Now it's time for the offense to jump things up and help their defense out, give them a little bit of rest. Yeah, time, time for them to give them a rest. Took the words right out of my mouth. What's the deal, y'all? So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. That's a gain of 11. Would have been a first down if not for that penalty moments ago. On second down, McCaffrey. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. He was brought down at the That's how you pick up a first down. You know where the sticks are. You know where the first down marker is. And you find a way to get there. That's called having vision. He had a lot of vision last week, didn't he? NFC Offensive Player of the Week. He was dominant. Back to back good plays. Have him on the move on first down. On the ground, McCaffrey. And this will go for five up to the 33. Christian McCaffrey, the, the first down carry. run got five. Here's He's second and five. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300 plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. He has elite instincts for his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. The Panthers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and eight. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. It's always a goal, and it's really nice defensively when you can rally to the football and make sure there's enough contact to force an incompletion. Force an incompletion and force another punt. 39 yards on the punt. Give him just one yard on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked to something well, else. And maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Four-yard line. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. That's good. Four up Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. They were not fooling around at all, were they? Second and short, and they brought out the heavy package. Almost felt like the super heavy package against that defense, didn't it? Yeah, I don't think they expected that much beef up front, and it turned into an easy first down conversion. So a good run by Fournette. Now another first and ten. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. Shaq Thompson on the tackle that time. Shaq Thompson. Four yards on the pickup. This is Fournette. Second and six. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL, and he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time, so make sure you get in shape. The Panther rush too strong. They get there and take him down. Yitor Gross Matos in there to record the second sack of his young NFL career. I spent a lot of extra time preparing for this game watching this offensive line because they gave up five sacks last week in their loss. They just gave up another one now. They don't seem to be working together as a cohesive unit. Right? Four guys might have it right, but the fifth guy is giving something up. They've got to find a way to all get on the same page. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. He juked him. It'll be a 44-yard punt, six on the return. And the Panthers will take over now, first and 10. 
Yeah, the Panthers right. now set to take over offensively. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. And a short pick up there as he'll take this up to right around the 20. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. A gain of two brings up second and eight. Now the throw pulled in by Anderson. And now look at this, big gain, but a fumble. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And to the 40-yard line, that's where the return stops. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. Back now comes Tampa Bay. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football away. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. But you've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it you over. You didn't I turn guess. it over, right? You're giving, it, you're giving your defense a chance because you're punting the ball away and they're set to go on the field as opposed to sudden change after a turnover. Wow, now we gotta go out there and stop people. So yeah, there's always something bonds to be gained from it. A gain of 13, it's a first down. Well, whenever you talk about players that really broke out in the 2019 season, you better add Chris Godwin to that list. Over 1,300 yards receiving, nine touchdowns. He was second among receivers last season, receiving yards per game at 95. This guy combines great body control, excellent strength, and terrific route running ability to become a really big downfield threat. Thirteen yards remaining on second down. To throw, it's Brady. Under pressure, and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. By Derek Brown. Breaking through to get him to the ground. It's a loss of seven. Two sacks last week. Another one right here. He's been unblockable lately, and I think that goes all the way back to not just his offseason, but the film study he's been doing during the week because I think he's found matchups that he likes and he's capitalizing. And a few times he's even defeated double teams. He doesn't care at this point. On third and long, it's Brady. A pass underneath for Fournette. And he's not going to sniff the first down here. He stopped at the 25. It's a gain of 11, but they're still well short. It's fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? On fourth down, Ryan Suckup now for the Buccaneer field goal. This from 42 yards out. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through, and the Bucs take a 3-0 lead. For Buccaneers 10, Panthers 7. So a good kick there, and they put the bow tie on it with three points. And let's face it, everybody wants a touchdown. We know that. But in the NFL, defenses are awfully good. You're not going to score each and every time. Be able to knock the ball through the post and take the three. By the way, I said bow tie. I meant just bow. Either about the time. But yeah, either way. You got it. I just went right past it. Out comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. But a decent start for him here in this first half, but they're losing. And I think as the captain of the offense, you probably always feel like you need to do more in that situation. The best have always felt that way. And they won't settle for anything less. So right now, his goal is to increase what he's doing on the field. Try to make sure his teammates come along with him. And he feels like, if I do better, everyone will do better. And that's what we're seeing from him right now. Got to have a little extra determination. Yeah, a little extra determination. He has thrown the touchdown pass. No interceptions for him personally to this point. Two minutes remaining in the first half. 10-7, our score. A reminder, coming up at halftime, we'll head to Orlando. Standing by there, Jonathan Coachman. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL in this second week of the regular season. 
The throw over the middle, taken in. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. 15 yards on the play, first down. Open man is Robbie Anderson. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. First down, Carolina. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Intended for D.J. Moore. It's now second and 10. They throw again on second down. This one's complete. The pass. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. And that is incomplete. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far. But on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. Tom Brady leads the offense out for their next possession. They've got the lead. He's a big reason why, looking sharp so far. And as we travel around the league, we see quarterbacks get it done in a variety of ways. But today's NFL does tell us one thing. If that guy doesn't play well, <laughs> their team's not going to win. And right now, he's got his team in the lead. And now they'll look to extend that lead. Now the Bucs going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. To throw again on second down. Brady, that's complete to his running back, Evans. The Bucs going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. From the gun on third down, Brady. He gets it to Brown, complete. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Nine yards on the play and a first down. But give the defensive guys a little bit of credit. They didn't let the deep ball beat them on that play, did they? No, the, the drag, that guy can be your safety valve. We saw it right there. Yeah, and it picked up a first down for him, too. Here's Brady. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. First down, Tampa Bay there, a gain of 13. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Pressure comes in. He's brought down. It's a Panther sack. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. The final shot before half for Brady. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we send you a stone throw away across I-4 to Orlando, they're standing by as Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? Okay, Brandon, we'll get you back to you and Charles in a bit, but first it's time for a trip around the NFL following an eventful opening weekend. Let's see what's happening in week two. We'll start over in Texas at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, and it's the Cowboys on top as they play the second quarter. Ezekiel Elliott has run for a touchdown there. From there, we head up to Wisconsin to check out the Packers at home in Lambeau. And that game all tied up as they do battle with the visiting Lions. Finally, we head to the shores of Lake Erie. See what's going on with the Cleveland Browns. And they were losers in that one to the visiting Cincinnati Bengals. 34-28, the final score. 
Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a defensive struggle. Which offense can break through in the second half? To find out, let's hand it over to our broadcast team of Brandon Gotten and Charles Davis. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. The Bucks with a lead, and they'll get the football first as the second half is underway. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. At their own 23-yard line. Out come the Panthers. They'll have it first on offense in the third quarter. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. And they'll begin by running the option. For two yards on the pickup there, it'll be second and eight. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Here's second and eight. This is Ertz on the pitch and catch. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. That catch good for five. It's third down. And it's third down. Trying for the tight end. Ertz, and it's intercepted. It's Devin White, the linebacker. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. The first half did not go their way, and that's not going to help matters at all. An interception here on the opening drive of the third quarter. Obviously not what they were striving to accomplish, but you know who's really upset on their team? The defense. Already trailing. They're going to be counted on to try and hold that score at least where it is. And they'll come out with a three tight end look on the first play of the drive. Trying to get the run game going. This is Fournette. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Darren Lee. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. It's now second and shotgun now for Brady. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. He was covered by Dante Jackson. Throwing his Brady on third down. Over the middle to Evans. Brady, and he's going to be brought down. He needed to get to the 20, but he's a yard or two short. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. This offense converted once on fourth down earlier. Now they're out there again to try once more. Quick slant to Brown. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. That's a fourth down pickup of 10 yards and an opportunity certainly missed on the defensive side. Well, the field goal attempt was well in hand. They had that, but they decided to go for it anyway. Extreme confidence, it looks like. Yeah, but I bet the defense is going to remember this one, right? They kind of rubbed their nose in it. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Well, they weren't able to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. And that'll get him halfway there as he takes it from the six to the three-yard line. On the tackle. It's a gain of three. Brings up third and two. Brady looking to throw on third and two. Strong coverage by Carolina. And on we go to fourth down. Brandon, some of those windows that throw the football that exist when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. And he is out of bounds here. 
So the decision to go for it turns out to be a good one. They get a couple of yards, and as a result, the drive keeps moving. It's now first and goal. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Antonio Brown taking it in. And the Bucs capitalize on the short field as they take it in for six. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember. Well executed to give him a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. It's good to make it 17-7. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. Taken in at the three. Just a yard pass there to the 21. At their own 22-yard line. The Carolina offense about ready to go. They trail by 10, 17-7 as they come up on a first and 10. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. William Golston. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop it. I don't care if you're taking it in round one, you're undrafted, whatever. As a rookie quarterback in this league, you're going to have games where you face adversity like this. Lessons. All the time you're going to face these lessons. The key for this guy is, will he be able to bounce back in the next one? Because right now, this has not been his game. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. And out of bounds across the 15-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. And it's third down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Eluding the pressure right. Give him eight yards that time on the scramble, and now fourth down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. That'll be a 48-yard punt, one yard on the return. Now here we go again with Tom Brady in Tampa's offense. And yeah, maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well, but the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with their quarterback on the ground so much. Now he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. At the 23-yard line. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. To throw is Brady. And he finds Howard complete. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. First and 10 at the 37-yard line. From the gun, it's Brady. A quick pass here to Godwin. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Buccaneers, first down. Now Fournette. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Tackle made at the 49-yard line. One-yard gain brings up second and nine. Working from the gun, it's Brady. Throwing the out route and complete. It's Evans. Complete. That catch good for five. It's third down. That's a gain of five. Brings up third and four. Operating from the gun. Brady. He's got Evans. 
And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Good catch there by Mike Evans, and his ability to get downfield and create big plays is something that Tom Brady hasn't had on the perimeter in the last few seasons. Mike Evans often fools defenders with his speed because he's so long, people think he can't be that fast. But he is and combines it with terrific hands and makes big catches. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. It's a gain of five. Brings up second and five. From the gun, Brady over the middle here to Brown. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Seven-yard line. Operating from the gun, Brady toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Gronkowski unable to hang on. That'll bring up second down. Whenever I see a drop like that, I have to kind of take a step back and check myself a little bit. So used to seeing those big guys make big time spectacular plays that when they drop one, I have to remind myself, we ask a lot out of these guys. Block and catch the football, not easily done in today's NFL. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And they're going to stop him short of the first down as he's tackled at about the 21. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. Mike Evans has been so good downfield. I think that sometimes we end up taking him for granted. When you look back at what he's done each year in the league, he's been a 1,000-yard receiver each and every time. Now paired with the prolific Tom Brady, those numbers could really jump. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He hit his first, this one from 38. And Suckup will put this one right through. And that will open the lead up now to 20-7. to 7. 20, Panthers 7. So a good kick there to polish off the drive with three points. Yeah, coaches always talk about finishing a drive with a kick. Two of them give you points, either an extra point or, in this case, a field goal. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. 30-yard line. Here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, <laughs> all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, if there's got, got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Now an option play on second down. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Seven yards there at a first down. A gain of seven. First down, Panther. He'll look to throw. Rolling to his left. Now he'll pull it down. No one there to help out downfield, but no problem. Scrambling for 22 and a first. Of well, Charles, in the past, a lot of people called this offense one-dimensional. I think you did. Well, I think it was you. I'll be honest, I did. <laughs> but I think the fan base is hoping with this young rookie that they can put some wrinkles in this offense like we just saw. I think you're exactly right because we did have that discussion that what we've seen in the past from them, they needed to broaden, and they have done it here. Look at what he's bringing to their offense, and now as a defensive coordinator, you've got some extra work to do to prepare for him and their offense. He rifles one that's intercepted. Mike Edwards picks it off. And they have the football that will set up shop at the 33-yard line. Defensively that time, they were in zone coverage. As a rookie QB, what lesson can you learn there? Well, understand this. You saw zone in college, and the defensive backs reacted, but they don't react like they do on this level. So when they're in zone and they see the ball coming to them, they'll react at least a half a second faster You've got to know where you want to go with the ball and be decisive with it. Otherwise, the end result can be something you don't like. 
They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. A six-yard pickup brings up second. Brady going to throw. At the 39 yard. It's complete to Brown, right side. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Fournette. He had a great strong move, but he'll still be stopped shy of midfield. Just a yard on the pick up there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. Really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Again, it's Fournette. And he'll be brought down right at midfield after a gain of only a couple. The Panthers turn to their nickel set here as they get ready for third down. A gain of two brings up for midfield. Here's Brady. He'll set up the screen to Fournette. Brady's pass complete. I know you've got a baseball background, right? A little bit. Yeah. Started minor league ball. Yeah, you did some of that, right? What do they do when they do the signals? An indicator, right? It starts... Whether it goes or not, yeah. Yeah, whether the play's on or not. How about the indicators offensive linemen give when they're getting ready to run a screen pass? And if those get red, <laughs> well, we just saw that there, didn't we? No game. No game. Deciphered it and finished the play off. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. Amazing, perfectly placed. If that ball goes one extra yard, maybe not even an extra yard, the starting point is the 20. So there is a reason that a lot of punters are also excellent golfers. They know distance control. You know what else they have? Same groove motion over and over. Once they have that down, it repeats under pressure. The former Gamecock here, this is Mike Davis. And now where are they going to mark him here? Well, they say he did get back to the one-yard line, but that could have easily been two points the other way. The second and ten now as we roll along in the third quarter from Tampa. Back now in Tampa. It's the Panthers in possession of the football, but facing a deficit here as we get to the fourth and final quarter of play. Here's McCaffrey. McCaffrey trying to escape, but he cannot. They get him in the end zone, and that's a safety. Well, there is still time to recover from this. It remains a two-score game, even with the two points there. But let's just say things not trending in the right direction. I like that phrase. I'm going to say it along with you. Things are definitely not trending in the right direction. They needed something out in that drive. Instead, they gave up two points and a lot of hope. After the safety, remember, they also need to give up the football, and here's the free kick. And some room to roam now. Any return to get you to midfield is a great return. One first down, and you're almost in field goal position. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now, heading back out onto the field. Now, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Gronkowski, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Normally, you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact, but in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well, incomplete. Brady will try again on second down. A pass underneath for Fournette. Five yards, now it's third and five. The last play on the completion got them half of what they needed. Now here's a tough third and five. From the gun, Brady. Evans has it left side. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. Receivers love having the reputation of being go-to guys on third down. And he was fighting like he really wanted to have that reputation, didn't he? I mean, he came very close to making that a first down. Broke the one tackle, but couldn't spring himself free.
Here's Bradley Pinion now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. And this is a beauty as that ball is going to angle out at the six-yard line. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. They'll come out throwing.